Dallas told me about you. Your divine welcomes you. Surprise! Lucian frowns at the figure. I underestimated you. Respect. Lucian's gaze rests upon you. Lucian, we should tell the God Woken the truth. Yes. Dallas nods. Then a skull is revealed. The jewel. I am eternal. Surprise, surprise. Fear not, God Woken. I shall tell you the tale as I long ago. Of course. Silence, sl our king forbade the seven. With the source they stole from the veil. The seven created the races so they would have worship. Really? Shut your mouth, God Woken. I tell you the truth. I seek. There is more. I was but a child when he did this because it was ironically the king, my father. I seek vengeance. Dallas has her reasons, as you can see. I seek peace for Rivalon. And. No matter. The plan is almost complete. We have made so many. Decide. There is no other. We only. The God King's voice rises in warning. No. Good. The world shall not know this. I, as I say, one last sacrifice. We already have another. S then let us show some. You'll be a hero. The voice of the god. Surrender to no one. I am your god and your king. I do not demand submission. You are sworn to me. For you swore. You swore. You took my favor, and now you refuse to repay it. Behold the fate of the Oathbreaker! Behold the fate of the Heretic! Behold the fate of the Thief! What's left of the corpse on the floor bubbles once and then pools, cooling quietly on the stone. The point is made. That is the fate of the world under the God King. We cannot allow it! Oh, really? Quiet, you! Now, God will. You know what you must do. We must heal the veil. God woken. Surrender your source. Surrender your soul. Good. Yes, very good. She raises what looks like a leash. A chuckle emerges from beneath the cloaked figure's hood. The chuckle becomes a guffaw, booming and hateful. Dallas flicks her wrist, and nothing happens. Surprise! 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 How? What? The leash is cut! A bright observation from a bilious imbecile. You know people often become sloppy when they're close to achieving their dream. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. Kill him. Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow a bone bag to enslave me. <laughs> Me! You should have listened to Tarquin, you worm-ridden wench. Nobody enslaves Bracchus Rex. I am Bracchus Rex. I am the Source King. Bracchus Rex, you ignorant dog. Bracchus, I am the one true king of the Source. He who shall be god of the Source. It is time for my divinity! Or did you really think I'd play slavishly along with your ridiculous scheme, Dallas? Yes, I played my part of the servile stooge. But know this, it was only about the power of divinity. Kill him. Now. Too late, you moldering blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally. God King, I call on you! You would interrupt Bracchus Rex. sends me a pet. What a fitting gift. Ruling the world with a bloody fist can be 
lonely. I needed a companion. Come to your father. Come to the Source King!
Bacchus Rex, the source king of legend, lies dead once more, perhaps even for good. Darius groans and looks to you with weakened eyes. I have failed. The future of all that is rests on your shoulders. You think back on your journey here, on all you have seen, on how the Magisters hunted sorcerers who committed horrible crimes, and purged sorcerers who only tried to heal the sick. You think of how the Eternals unleashed void-woken horror on the world in an effort to reclaim it. You look at the source around you. You know that within your reach is divinity. You think of what you could do with such power. Seeing the vast quantity of source in front of you, you think you should be able to handle a couple of void woken. You think of your personal problems. It's time to make a choice. A choice that decides the fate of Rivalon and of you. Where do you stand? You think back on your journey here. On all you think of how the Eternals unleashed void woken. You think of what you could do with. It's time to make a choice. Where do you stand? You think back on your journey here, on all you have seen, on how the Magisters hunted sorcerers who committed horrible crimes. You think of how the Eternals unleashed void woken horror on the You think of what you could do with such power. It's time to make a choice. A choice that decides the fate of Rivalon and of you. Where do you stand? After all that you have been through, and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take, or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate, and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? After all that you have been through, and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take or to sacrifice. And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the god world. When the dust settled, no new divine had risen. Instead, all source was released into the world for all the people and every creature to share. Everyone was now a sorcerer. And united, the peoples of Rivalon pushed back the God King into the very depths of the void. This ushered in a new golden age of peace and prosperity. But alas, it was not to last. With many greedy for wealth, power, and position, the struggle soon began anew. Source, the very language of creation, was used in violence once more. The never-ending contest for power continued. As for me, my last hope of ever being freed of the God King's terrible tyranny faded when the God Woken failed to seal the veil. An eternity of pain and suffering is mine, in service of the King, until the day I am freed, the day the God King returns. stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here she looks almost angelic. Well, here we are again. You, me, and the ship I've saved from ruin for your personal benefit. I'd say you owe me, but why stay the obvious? Get an eyeful. I expect it's the last we'll see of each other for some time. I have a lot of planning to do. Now that there's not to be a new divinity. She drums her fingers testily on her crossed arms. All that work, all that effort, tossed into the gutter like a malformed child. You say that now. 
Let's see how you feel when you realize the true implication of a world filled with sorcerers. <sighs> Never mind. I'll find another way. I always do. She fingers the mask covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. Sacrificed much. And I'd have given even more to see you fulfill your destiny. She looks you up and down. I guess this will have to do. Take a moment, why don't you? Relax. Enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. The same way I do everything, of course. Demonic guile. Oh, I don't know. Around and about. Treat myself to some mead, a lover or 300. I'd say we've earned it. Perhaps our paths will cross again. Perhaps not. Until we find out. of all, eh? A bold move, I'll grant you that. I didn't think anyone considered the little people anymore. Hmm. I don't know yet. Perhaps peace will reign and all will be equal. Or perhaps you've bestowed great power on undeserving children and turned them loose on each other. Time will tell, I'm sure. That is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me. Have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language, unreadable to most, but myself, naturally. It comes from a mysterious race from another world, beings that feed on minds. I intend to seek them out. This Gustafjan seems to guard portals to their realm. And once I've uncovered one, well, why settle for being the greatest mind in just one world when there's another for the taking? The spirit of Sabeel looks out at the sparkling sea. me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old. And so, as always, I am at the ready. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. The world was at peace, at least for now. Few were as prepared for the new world as the lizard kin of the ancient empire. With power spread equally throughout the world, the advantage lay with those who knew how to steal it. And at this, the lizards excelled. Justinia returns to her throne. Under her rule, the Dwarven Kingdom prospered, until two years later, a jealous lover stabbed her in the heart with a mutton fork.
With their power returned, the elves reclaimed their lands from the death fog and began to rebuild. Soon they would split as two factions sought power, one to bring back the trees, the other to bring back the scions. A dwarven joke did the rounds. It ends with the punchline, so Lucian dropped the death fog on them again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The black pits took fire, the oil there burns still. Driftwood became a center of industry, trade, and transport. Lohar the Dwarf became mayor. His time in office was cut short by an unfortunate wound that spontaneously appeared on his neck. Lagan left his over-demanding wife and began a relationship with a local bard. In the spirit of loving generosity, he returned the ring to his now ex-wife. In a fit of rage, she threw it into the sea. The nameless isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Millennia later, adventurers would come in search of the legendary divine city of Arx and the crypt of the great Lucian. None would pass the path of blood. Young Han went into the theater and became one of the realm's most popular actors. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament she had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon, and so her search continued. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Jehan, the demon hunter, found himself at a loose end. So, he opened a museum of demonic artifacts. After it burned down, with Jehan inside, witnesses claimed that the flames were the color of blood. And then there was you. You returned to the world a sorcerer among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins. It was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with... With the survival of Rivalon. The voice of the God King comes to you from beyond the veil. 
surrender to no one. I am your god and your king. I do not demand submission. I demand only loyalty. Together, we shall rule the world. But first, these thieves must die. You are sworn to me. Fulfill your oath. Kill them. Thank you for your loyalty, my child. You shall be rewarded. Now, unleash my righteous fury. Seal the fate of these heretics. Kill the thieves!